Hi everyone, this is Princess Anna Mekobia Jo and we are on day 34. <laughs> I'm excited. We're getting closer and closer and closer to the finish line. Oh my god. King Asha or Asa. Anyhow you want to pronounce it. But I'm going to call him Asha, okay? So I really love this guy. He started so well. I mean, coming from a family line of people that were evil, like rebel bomb, you know, disobeying the Lord. That's David's grand grand great son, um, great grandson, you know. So he came from a holy line, you understand me? But his immediate example where Hobram was bad, you understand me? His mother, grandmother, too many stories, too many examples. At that point in time, he said, because of how his father ruled, there was this um, altar, strange high places all over Israel. And Asha brought them down. Asha started so well. Asha did not just bring down the high places. Asha made sure people honored the Lord. One time, the kings of Libya and the other, I think, Egypt came against him. The Bible says that he trusted the Lord and God gave him victory. But somewhere along the line, another war came. The Bible says that Asha ran to the king of Syria for help. And there, my brethren, was the undoing of Asha. God sent a prophet called Hanani to say, so I cannot help you, right? I helped you before when there was war. Two nations joined and came against you. I delivered you. Now only one came. You ran to Syria. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Why would you do such a thing? King Asha did not repent, though. He instead was provoked. Locked Hanani in prison. The Bible says... Asha died having, was he rotten leg? Oh, Jesus Christ. You see, this issue of trust that we always talk about, it looks as if it's just, we're not, you know, doing clanging cymbals or, or whatever the English. It doesn't make sense when you're talking about, oh, oh, trust the Lord, trust the Lord. Guys, it's a big deal to Father to be trusted. I've always told you guys that one of the biggest desires of God, the, 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 the zenith of, of love, your love for God is to trust him when it makes no sense. When, especially those times when you're looking around and it's like you're surrounded. It's like I have no escape route. If you can just decide that, let me see how God helped me out of this thing. God likes it. It gives him joy to be trusted. And see King Asha, every other good thing he had, did, he had done, now it didn't make sense because of this one thing he did. When you don't trust God, you just cut off yourself prematurely again from your inheritance because that's really what we are called to receive of the Lord. Trust the Lord. I don't know what you're dealing with right now that requires you to trust Him, but you're still using your sense. When are you going to learn? Eh? Can't you pull up your sovereignty? If Asha had pulled up the sovereignty up the last time I was in war, I trusted the Lord and He helped me. Get me a prophet. You know how they do now. There's so many prophets. Prophet to go and talk to the father. Father will say, I will come with you and I will finish them. Go from this journey or go from this pathway and I'll be there for you. What was it that made Asha not to think about the fact that God has helped him before? I know every war comes with a new sense of fear. Especially when they said this particular king had already taken over Ramah, which was in Judah. And then, you know, Asha became afraid and said, okay, I have a relationship with the king of Syria. Let me use their allegiance. He didn't ask the Lord. He said, he just made a call. Hello, king of Syria. You know, we have a deal. My father and your father did this and me. Okay, now, right now, I want you to tell the king of Israel to pull back. When you feel like you have the connections to help yourself, you automatically make yourself God's enemy. I don't care the connections you have, my dear. If you have chosen to work with the Lord, he's a very jealous God. You better always remind yourself first, how is the Lord going to help me? Who would the Lord ask me to speak to? How? Because the way you think that he will get out of the trouble is not the way. It's not that connections are bad. And I know people always say, hey, use the common sense. Why are you disturbing God for what he has? Why he gave you a relationship? What if that relationship is not what he wants to use to solve that problem? The problem was not that this man caused the king of Syria. The problem was that he did not trust God because God may have wanted to deliver him from that battle a different way. Yes, that thing caused the battle, the fight not to happen, but it was it paid the Lord that this man did not seek his counsel. I don't know how else to fill up this issue of trust with us. And I'm talking to myself too. Can we repent before the Lord? Is there any way we have not trusted God enough? 
Anyway, we are looking at our own connection, using our own sense to calculate. Okay, if I call this person to call that person, hey, don't worry, oh, you need these things. Okay, I'll call this person. I'm not saying that you should not become dumb or daft, but the truth is, when you are in trouble, don't just, even if you know what to do, I always say, don't go by the first impulse. Always go to Father and ask Him. That's why there's a relationship. Seek His will. Lord, we repent. We ask in Jesus' mighty name. Help us to always remember to ask for your opinion when we are challenged in the face of any problems whatsoever. We thank you because it is your will to lead us. And being your sheep, we surrender to be led forever. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank <sighs> you.